well uh, good afternoon students uh, today we are going to discuss about the endopedons so in the last class we have discussed about the epipedons okay epipedons the pedons that means what are the different origins of pedons which we are, which were which, which which has a very specific pedons which lays on the upper layer you know the upper layer with the definite measurable properties so those pedons should have a very definite measurable properties should have a definite characteristics will be there should be there so we have discussed in the last class and in the last class we have discussed about the epipedon those are the upper pedons and today class we are going to discuss about the endopedons endopedons means inside endo means inside so the these layers will be beneath the uh, subsurface layer so we have to see uh, what are the different kind of uh, epipedon endopedons are there what are the endopedons what are their role what is their characteristics how they are formed everything we have to remember and these are also students by these endopedons also is is measure have some specific measurable soil properties here also you can some measurable soil properties will be there and these end, endopedons are highly influenced by the pedogenic process or soil forming process which we have discussed in some two class back okay so that is the importance of pedogenic process in the in, in the soil formation so now we are going to discuss about the what are the endopedons what are their role etc we are going to deal all those things okay so before that i am going to share the ppt so that i will start the live streaming a minute yeah now it is okay is it visible is it visible to you is it visible to you students is it visible yes sir okay right so last class we have discussed about the endopedons now we are going to talk about endopedons now so today we are going to discuss about the endopedons now so what are those endopedons are very first student first of all you, you try to remember those terminologies where if, if you are very very elementary or we are this is the first time if you are listening these words means try to note it down in a pen and, with a pen and paper okay then then and try to utter once or try to pronounce once definitely it is it will be very easy so now we will see what are the endopedons we will see very first one is argillic what is it called argillic endopedon and second one is called natric endopedon and third one is called argic endopedon and next one is called candic and later on it's called spodic and next is sombric and next is cambic so what are those argillic natric argic cambic spodic sombric cambic okay and coming next is oxic and next is sulfuric very interesting one and next is salic and next is plastic and next is albic and next one is glossic and next is calcic and next is gypsic from here you can see some similarities you can see some similarities in these origins these are pedons and next is petrocalcic then you can see petrogypsic and next one is called pragipan next is called duripan pragipan duripan so these are the different endopedons so what are those these are the different different endopedons first of all if you are very first time or listening these words means try to utter once okay what are those argillic natric argic cambic spodic sombric cambic oxic sulfuric salic plastic albic glossic calcic gypsic petrocalcic petrogypsic pragipan duripan okay students so you want to be very clear what kind of words you are using so this terminology is if a student if a student coming very first time he is learning endopedons means definitely these words will be some alien type but don't worry once you understand the interior depth of this uh, endopedons it will be very easy very first one we will see the what is the argillic so one by one you please uh, you know, so this is completely this origin is completely developed by the elevation so elevation of silicated clays so what are this this origin is completely formed by the elevation of silicated clays and you can see more and more fine clay was precolated in this layer and you can see some before some skin layer contains you can be deposited 
Uh, what are those curtains? It, uh, it, it will be like this, said students. The curtains will be like this. So you can say some skin deposits. You can say some clay deposits will be on the head faces. And sometimes, you know, the, the, it, it, you should remember one thing. It should be clay content should be very high. How much means it should be one way. It should be the clay content. It should be at least one by tenth of the overall layer horizons. The clay content should be how much? If the both alluvial and uh, alluvial and alluvial horizons have 180 centimeters thickness means it should be this argillic horizon should be at least 80 cent 18 centimeters. This is the meaning of this. So if it should be if it is a 180 centimeters thickness is there means by combining all these things this should be at least 18 centimeters. This argillic should be 18 centimeters. So naturally students it is very greater than the B horizon. It is 1.2 times much clay content will be there. So more than three percent of clay will be there. And uh, alluvial layer has, a, has more than 50% will be there. So these are the measurable soil properties. So overall, what should you remember? This, this horizon was developed by the elevation of silicated enriched or uh, enriched materials. And you can see some curtain faces, some you can see some clay deposits on the pets. Okay, students, if if the for instance, it should be one by tenth of over layer condition. The thickness should be one by tenth over over the other horizons. What are those horizons? If the alluvian, alluvial origins. Alluvial and alluvial uh, origins are around 180 centimeters thickness means this argillic origin should be around 18 centimeters thickness. Please remember you will get many questions on this uh, on this on this end of it all. Coming to students, what the next one is called natric. You know, it is a high sodium dominated students. High there will be high sodium. How you will remember? What is the formula for sodium? Na and sodium is like this. You should remember like this. Okay. Sodium this is a highly sodium clay enriched. Horizon with a column and prismatic structure. You can see all those things. Most in exams, what kind of questions you will get? The highly sodium dominated endopyranes. Sometimes they won't give this endopyran also. You, you should identify something. They will give some mixture of both endopyrans and epipyrans in the options. So you should be very keen and very perfect, very precise in your answer. So what is this? The high sodium clay enriched horizon with a column and prismatic structure is natric horizon. Natric means sodium dominated. So mostly. It meets all the requirements, students. It is quite similar to the argillic, but only problem is that it has 50 percentage more exchangeable complex saturated with with the sodium and has more exchangeable magnesium, sodium, and calcium. So here there is a base 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 saturation is very high when compared to the argillic. That is a major problem when compared this is a, compared with the so this is called the natric. Natric means it is a sodium dominated horizon. Okay, students. Coming to the next is argillic horizon. This is also is this is also alluvial horizon of clay silt and humus but this origin is formed directly under the plow layer students why because of this origin due to, due to the continuous cultivation it will this origin was formed it has a how much thickness it will be there around 10 percent thickness will be there or sometimes you can expect more than 10 and you can expect some warm holes warm holes means some you know the worms with the worms etc you can say a, a warm holes by the volume you can say around this five percent so this horizon this argic horizon was directly formed under the plow layer. Plow layer is plow layer. We will, we will represent as AP. Okay, students. This is regarding the argic origin. Remember the keywords. That is very important regarding this pyramids. Okay, argic means is also alluvial, but formed directly under the plow layer due to the continuous cultivation. Okay, students. It is around sometimes it will be more than centi more than ten centimeters thickness. This is regarding the argic origin. Coming to next one is called sporic origin. Here also. With this as uh, this horizon, this subsurface horizon completely enriched with SQ oxides with or without iron. Okay, iron. Okay, there will be no there may, maybe or may not be iron, but it is completely enriched with humus, humus, humus. It it under it uh, it underlies an O, A, P, or E horizon. Or where it open, it, it either it will underlies under O horizon or under A P under maybe under play under plow layer, or even you can you can expect under the E horizon also, that alluvial horizon also. It now what we can say it is also uh, sometimes sometimes it may satisfy the characteristics of umbric epipedon also. There are many specific uh, limited dealing with it. Like when we where, where is some 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 limitations. What are the, when we when we deal with aluminium, iron, organic matter, and clay ratio, and weathering overlying horizon is virginal cultivated. So due to this, you when we deal with these things, so sometimes it may reach up to the umbric epipedon. In general, where it forms. What are the climatic conditions required for this? You have to get the cold and humid regions are very important. Okay, and we have sometimes uh, you can expect some sporic material, and it is more. The, and keep remember, students, this sporic horizon may not may not be comes under AP horizon. Don't confuse AP means 
plow like plow horizon don't confuse with this is not a plow horizon mostly this horizon very rarely observed in india the so called podzols are reported mostly where podzols will come podzols means podzolization okay where it occurs mostly himalayas and um, it requires almost it it it, it requires of uh, podzic horizons and lay down under this soil soil tags under so due to this podzic ca characteristics where where for due to the podzic characteristics only we will recognize this horizon so regarding this spod spodic horizon you should remember only one thing so here you can you can, you can see some dominance of podzols because of sometimes it may have it may have sesq oxides enriched with sesq oxides you know what is mean you should just link this horizon with the podzolization then you can understand what is that what is the main theme of this horizon this horizon this podic horizon so now coming to the next is called sombric horizon sombric means a free drain horizon located under the albic horizon we will see what is albic horizon etc as it has a dark color and a base status looks like umbric what what will happen actually due to the heavy layer of humus neither associated with aluminum and humus in the pods are not appear by sodium and common natric horizon actually in the sodium you can see some color variations it should be very dark in color when compared with upper layers and it is very dark in color only we can you can compare with this because it does not have icec or clay contain a high base saturation like natric horizon sombric you can see it's a pre drained horizon naturally located under the albic horizon its colorness is very dark these are the, these are the, these are the key points you have to remember These are the color. Color is very darkness. I'll come back. Coming to the next one is called cambic horizon. See, this is cambic horizon. It is mostly this is formed due to the some physical and chemical alterations. Due to the physical alteration, weathering, chemical and physical weathering, this horizon may form. What will happen means the material sometimes it will go. It will go pedogenic process. The material will be enough to form some, some soil structure may be formed. And if the structure, if the texture was suitable. what will happen suitable texture texture was available in that particular climatic conditions what will happen it will liberate due, due to this physical and chemical alterations you can expect some iron oxides will be liberated silicated clays will be liberated and original rocks of more than 50% volume and even though due to this the alteration was not completely due to this alteration this physical and chemical alteration was not completely destroy the some volcanic glass you can, you can see the alopen glass also or fells fells because weathering was not happened very properly the alteration was not happened so it's a quite uh, quite similar to the level of oxides and human clays though though it has all these properties but this cambic horizon cannot be compared with argillic or spodic horizons and also students we can see different the mineralogical composition the mineralogy is highly variable because of the youthfulness the youngness of this of this horizon you can expect different different uh, due, due to the youngness of this horizon and also and this origin also you can found where the ground water fluctuation is very high if there is any ground water fluctuation is very high and you can see 50% more thickness and due to this ground water the ground water uh, you can see some evidence of carbonates and by and some gypsum 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 components also you can observe in cambic horizon so what are the what are the things you have to remember in cambic horizon this is formed by the physical and physical and chemical alteration this origin was completely formed by the physical and chemical alterations are formed and mostly you can see wherever the some fluctuation in ground water we can find this cambic horizon differentiation so this is this is the reason, this is the thing you have to remember regarding the cambic horizon and another one is called students candy horizon k it's a both only this one letter was changed we can see this is the subsurface low active clays we can see you can't you can't expect a with or you can't it may or may not be expected some clay clay depositions and these are the measurable character students what are those if the ch should be more or less more or uh, more or equal to 16 cm per p per kg and the ph should be around 7 and the effective cec or ecec what is meaning of ecec you should say what is the meaning of ecec it is it is around more or less 12 cm per p plus kg please after completion of class you should explain what is the meaning of ecec okay it shows uh, it shows a clay content increases up on the upper boundary you can see because was very it is there is no that much uh, problem we already we have mentioned with or without clay and clay content will be more than 1.2 percent if, if with vertical distension it will be more clay will be there and less than less than 15 cm we can say abrupt textural boundaries you can easily easily distinguish the textural bound textural classification and you can't expect any stratification coarse layers all this so overall students we can remember for examination or for the for your idea we can remember this it has a very low active clays with or without skin 
these are the things and these are the measurable properties it's very hard to typical i remember but you make some idea regarding this measurable soil properties coming to next one is called oxic you know this oxic is enriched with iron aluminium and completely dominated with one is two type of clay mineral this is the this is the key point regarding with this and these are the measurable soil properties here so whenever whenever you you oxic horizon was came into your mind means you should remember those are the iron and aluminium oxides and dominated with one is to one type of clay minerals so and from where silica is completely leached so it was completely deposited so oxic horizon you can see and these are the these are the typical characteristics the e the c is around 16 or less, 16 or less more centimole pk and ph will be 7 and effective cec of 12 uh, 12 centimoles and p plus k so you can see that the increase in clay can gradually than candy horizon it contains less than 10 percent weather weatherable mineral and in fine fractions so naturally there are highly weathered soils we can find in oxic horizon so what are the key word you have to remember here these are enriched with iron aluminium that endopyrone is called oxic endopyrone oxic horizon i mean to next one is called students Sulfuric horizon. Naturally, students, this type of horizon you can see where the soils was completely affected with acid sulfate soils, which you learn in problematic soils. I hope everyone knows acid sulfate soils. Naturally, these acid sulfate soils are very quite common. We can see you can encounter many acid sulfate soils in in district in states of Kerala and in Uttar Pradesh, some parts of Uttar Pradesh, even in Pondicherry also. Then and there, then and there, they rare but not officially recognized. Practically, I have seen some soils. So in sulfuric sulfuric horizon. So what is this? It's a mineral organic organic soil horizon, 50 centimeters more thick. The pH will be less than 3.5, less than or equal to 3.5 when, when it was tested under the one is to one soil water conditions. And it is highly toxic to this because if the sulfuric acid content will be very high in this in this uh, in this horizons. Mostly this in the horizon formed under this under this uh, 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 the parent mineral will, will will be what will what how it will be? It will be some sulf uh, sulfuric material will be there as it's uh, iron sulfates will be there what will happen this when this was exposed to the outer environment the sulfuric material will convert it into sulfuric so naturally what will happen there will be a lot of problems you can see some foul smell you can see engineering structures will be de de destroyed so a lot of problems will be there and also when you dig a profile you can see jurassic co concentration jurassic concentration this is these are the concentration we look some coloring conditions we can see some oxides we can see these are all the oxide conditions. We can see these coatings with jurassics. You can see a lot of yellow color jurassics. We can see all this. Okay. This is regarding sulfuric acid. And you will read sulfuric origin and sulfuric sulfates, acid sulfates, etc. You will read in particular in a lecture. I mean, the next one is called salic origin. Here you can see some secondary accumulation of water. You can see some secondary accumulation of soluble salts. Don't confuse with the sodic. That is different. This, is, this salic is different. So here you can see some secondary accumulation of uh, soluble salts. Of sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, and depth of soil profile. Horizon is around this around it should be around 50 centimeters with secondary soluble salts over two percentage. And the salt content and the what is what are the measurable soil properties? So if you see the salt content of electronic conductivity in saturation paste should be around 30 decisimens per meter. And the product of EC normally is decimal of thickness at more than centimeters. So overall, you should remember. The EC is around 30 decimals per meter. That means there is there is a dissolvement dissolve of highly secondary clay mineral, secondary accumulation of water. So our secondary soluble salts will be more in salic origin. This is the key word you have to remember. Salic origin means secondary accumulation of water. Okay, students. Coming to next is called albic horizon. Actually, this is albic horizon. It's formed because of bleaching of e horizon of podzols and planols. The typical color value. These are the measurable properties. Five or more. And the color largely implies the clay and free ox iron oxides having removed from the horizon. So what we can see in the albic horizon is this due to the removal, to all the iron oxides complete all the clay color. Every the color implies that clay and other free oxides completely removed. That's why albic horizon looks like this. It looks like this. You can see because all the borzols everything was gone. So generally it occurs below the A horizon. Sometimes under the albic horizon, under under the albic horizon, there is a argilic or candic or sporic or cambic horizons or a frangipan. Sometimes under beneath this albic horizon, you can expect these horizons. So this is remember uh, remember this regarding this. Remember albic horizon in this context. Okay. So naturally it lies between. Sometimes you can be you can expect some between argilic and candic also and frangipan. It lies between also sometimes it lies between sporic and argilic origin also. There will be some difference all those things. So this is regarding the albic origin. Coming to the next one is 
glossic corgan glossic corgan shows the albic corgan characteristics gradually enduring an argillic or candic and matric corgan sometimes it will show some properties like that naturally it was developed how this glossic corgans are developed means because of degradation of argillic natric or candic corgan from which clay clay and free ions or oxides are removed so how this clay what are the key point you have to remember in here in glossic corgan you have to remember the when the when the argillic natric and candic corgan are degraded degraded means all the clay oxides are washed out then you can see the result of this glossic corgan this is the result. and regarding the measurable soil properties these are it is around 5 cm more thick consisting of alluvial part which consisting of 15 to 80% of by volume of glossic corgan and alluvial part also you can expect these are the measurable soil properties okay these are the data of measurable soil properties so overall students regarding glossic corgan you have to remember these are these this is found by degradation of argillic natric and candic corgan this is regarding the glossic corgan next is calcic corgan an alluvial origin which is which is a, with a secondary accumulation of calcium and or magnesium carbonate which are enriched materials magnetite will have 50 cm thickness at least this is regarding the calcic corgan these are the measurable soil properties you can expect or less than you can expect some 5% percent of more carbonates under the underlying corgans beneath the layers so calcic corgan the word itself which says that it is a alluvial origin with secondary calcium secondary calcium and and or magnesium carbonates and enriched materials this is regarding the calcic corgan remember this keyword is very important coming to next one is called gypsic origin gypsic actually it is all secondary accumulation of calcium and uh, magnesium sulfates remember that is why this is this this make a sense in the previous slide enriched materials it is more than 15 cm thick and consisting of 5% of more gypsum here the gypsum will be there contain it sulfates that's why you can see gypsum in gypsic corrosion calcic corrosion is different the accumulation of secondary calcium but here you can expect some gypsum accumulation of gypsum petrocalcic it is uh, enduring calcic origin cemented by carbonates with or without silica you know so it, it is also accumulation of cal cal carbonates on streams but it may be we have with or without silica how much it is silica may present or may not be present in this particular origin but the thickness around it will be 10 cm and hardness will be 3 or more in my dry fragments break down into acid but not with water so what will happen if you want to break this fragments you need an acid but not with water this is regarding the petrocalcic next one is called petrogypsic corgan the strong these are the strong cemented indu cemented gypsic corgan whose dry fragments do not slake in you know slaking means that you can't say any, any slaking so the origin is the origin is centimeters or more thick as percent is are more gypsum content product is the thickness these are the measurable soil properties thickness and gypsum content is around more than 150 percent so gypsum content is very high but this petrocalcic you can't see any slaking in the water when you dissolve it this this particle this this rocks this is regarding the petrogypsic and coming to next is called classic corgan it is a thin it is a thin layer students very thin layer permeable dark reddish brown to black color clay it is a very thin layer that cemented by the iron and organic matter lies within 50 cm or 50 cm surface it has a minimum thickness of 1 mm this this classic is very thin students very thin layer it is are hardly you can see like it lies it will be hardly you can see between 15 cm only very thin layer darkish red it will be there very brown to black color clay you can expect in this classic origin very thin layer in it very very thin layer even you can expect very 1 mm thick thickness it will be there so this is regarding the overview of uh, both epipedons and endopedons these are the different different keywords just remember all these things and remember all the all the keywords and concept definitely you can attend the questions very well regarding this lecture so just to make these are these are the short points which i which i mentioned regarding the epipedons and endopedons this will be helpful for you to understanding my entire presentation this is a summary of this lecture any how students thank you very much for patience in listening thank you so much very small class i hope up to here we have completed the eight lectures so hardly there will be another eight or nine lectures will we will end up this syllabus of, of pedology thank you very much students thank you for patience if you have any doubts you can ask now right only two students any doubts students <clears throat> 
and jrf student is this, i think you are you are listening this words for the first time but don't worry you just read once i have put actually my presentation you can see some theory part you pure you I, I will share the link to you youtube link uh, you just pause my video and read that part that read that theory part then you can understand what is happening in this soil so every uh, pad on there will be some keywords so remember that keyword based on the concept you build your idea that's all automatically you can cover up end of video and after this lecture maybe not tomorrow day after tomorrow there will be an exam i'm preparing question paper for that and in the next coming exam there will be i will cover the previous lectures also those rocks and minerals weathering etc i will cover everything so you should read everything and at least now at least this exam you should score more marks don't go make to mark thank you very much students if you have any you can ask any questions students no questions okay okay whether we have no doubts no doubt sir <laughs> whether that once you read i can understand your you know, as a b i'm also came from bsc level once you read regarding endopedance everything today now itself today evening if you have if you have it's almost 2:30 So okay, we will take some rest around one or two, one or two, one hour more than one hour. You take rest, and after wake up, ping just while you carrying the milk or what you are in evening, just you read about the pedological process, then make some idea, build up some idea, then automatically you can understand. Okay, so okay, very last, be be sincere okay. in your preparation. Automatically will get very nice time. Okay, Ramya, all the sariya cha, is that the doubt area? Ling, Ling la. Is that all? You tell me la. Is the endopedance, epipedance, all the parts you learn? Ling la. நீங்களும் <laughs> 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 ராகினி ராய் அந்த பொண்ணு நல்லா பண்ணலாம் இந்த வாட்டியாவது நல்லா பண்ணுங்க ஓகேங்க சார் நல்லா மார்க் எடுங்க எஸ் சார் थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू சார் ஓகே வெரி மச் தட்ஸ் ஆல் ஃபார் டுடேஸ் கிளாஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் கிளாஸ்ல சூட் தான் மாம் थैंक यू பை